Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have very special unboxing, so let's see what's in here. That's right, I got to test out the very anticipated Canon EOS R5 and the super secret R6. And finally, I can share the results with you guys on its release date. Warning, I'm not a review channel, so if you wanted to hear all about the specs and technical details, this video is not for you. Instead, I will show you real results from real photo shoots and talk about improved quality, autofocus, video capabilities, and just my overall thoughts. The first thing I'm so happy to see on both R5 and the R6 is that Canon brought back the multi-controller joystick and the scroll wheel. I was really missing those two on the EOS R, but now it's back, it's very familiar, it feels just like the old DSLR that I'm used to and I am very very happy about it. We also of course have the flip screen that you can flip any way you want. It's super useful whenever I'm trying to hit those low angles or whenever I shoot some cinematic video footage. Next, let's talk about autofocus. It has improved so much. The new face and eye detection works perfectly every time and it's fast. Plus, now we have the animal eye detection, which I of course tested on Luna. Why do I lose all my control? Oh, oh. I keep on letting my bad habits make us both come crashing to the floor. Something to save us Close but we're strangers Feel like we're far apart I'm Stripping down A problem I had with the EOS R is that sometimes it would have trouble focusing if it had multiple objects in front of the lens, like the grass in this case. Oh, 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 it's having a hard time to focus here. So I wanted to see if it was fixed in the R5 and the R6. So here I am putting the gate in the foreground and it did not confuse the autofocusing at all. I had absolutely no trouble here. It was super effortless and especially helpful when I was holding onto the railing with one hand trying to get that shot. But at least because I have the IAF, I don't have to worry about that. Here I'm doing some more testing this time with the tree branches all around the model and again I didn't have any problems here. So I'm shooting through the leaves which normally is hard for it to find the focus but it's doing a really good job. It's finding the eye right away. Wow it, it really is really easy. <laughs> so nice Lush. yeah oh oh that that is the gorgina image yes oh my god <gasps> i love this so much The improved autofocusing should also be able to recognize faces even when the subject is not looking directly at the camera or even when they are not facing the camera. So I wanted to do some shots with the model looking away plus the full body shots. It's usually hard to get a nice sharp focus on the face. And once again, I'm really happy with how the camera performed. Thank you. 
so not only is it very accurate but also the autofocusing is super fast so i'm able to shoot at 1.2 while the model is walking and still get the eyes really sharp it's really pretty because when you're walking like when you step like this the light goes through the dress and you can see like the silhouette so maybe we'll try you yeah ooh, ooh, literally yeah if you're like dragging it and you're holding it but that spot is the best so maybe what you can do yeah like whack walk whack whack back and forth <laughs> right here yes yeah and back Wow. And let's do a twirl. Another cool thing is that the autofocusing works in very low light situations. So I decided to test it in a light painting photo shoot. Usually we would have to have the lights on, set the focus and then turn the lights off and fire the shot. But here I was actually able to keep the lights off the whole time. The room was almost completely dark and I was super impressed that the camera could successfully focus on the eyes. Three. I think it's better. Oh, wow, that was like one nice drag. That's nice. Okay, I think it's better not to do like too many, just one nice drag. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, keep. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, and I love you looking down like that. One, two, three. Yes, yes, that's nice. That's nice. One, two, three. Right there. One, two, three. They're so dope. If you're still not convinced, here's my husband taking a picture of me relying only on the face and eye detection. He's not a photographer, he doesn't really know how to use this properly and he was still able to get a sharp image at 1.2. Also, we're shooting this in like a back alley of our house by the dumpster. Can we just appreciate how beautiful this picture looks with the 50mm 1.2 RF lens? This lens will make anything look good. So overall, when it comes to autofocusing, both the R5 and the R6 exceeded my expectations. It is probably the best eye and face detection system I have tried so far. So let's move on now to image quality. You are getting the signature Canon colors with beautiful skin tones, but I also noticed a slight improvement from the Canon R. Here are two raw images taken in the same spot, one on the Canon R and the other on Canon R6. The lighting might have been slightly different, but you can still see a big difference in colors and a big improvement. Raws are always more muted, but these raws were so easy to work with that I barely had to do any color correction. Here's another shoot I did with natural light and gloomy weather, which usually results in dull colors and bad skin tones. But as you can see, these raws look beautiful. And again, I did very little color correction here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I was saying, like, because this dress is so big, like if you give me like maybe a little bit more like of the shoulder, like, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. 
<gasps> that is so angelic. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Oh, that's gorgeous. Mm hmm. That's beautiful. The biggest difference between the R5 and the R6 is the megapixel count. R5 is 45 megapixels while R6 is 20. It is a significant difference but there are pros and cons to both. But first let's take a look at these two images. One was taken with the R5 and the other one with R6. Can you guess which one is which? Let me know in the comments if you were able to guess right. It might not be a huge noticeable difference when viewing the pictures online, but while editing you will definitely see a huge difference. The R5 handles the shadows and the highlights beautifully. I was able to do some extensive editing without losing the quality. I can crop in really tight. The skin always looks nice and detailed, but the con is that it takes longer to process these files. They are very big and if you have an older laptop or a computer, you might not be able to handle these smoothly. I'm not used to editing files that are this big and it was a bit of a learning curve for me. While while the R6 reminds me a lot of my 5D Mark III, which has the 22 megapixels. So the files are very, very similar and easy to work with. But you are using some of that quality you get with the R5. I will share some more thoughts on both R5 and the R6 at the very end. Finally, when it comes to quality, I wanted to see how the R5 handles high ISO. So I did a photo shoot using just window light. It was super gloomy outside, so we were not getting a lot of light in. And even with f1.2, I had to shoot around ISO 400 to 600. I think the images look great once again. I was really pushing the shadows and it didn't affect the quality of the images. Now let's talk about video. Both Canon R5 and R6 have some amazing specs, but I'm no videographer. So again, this is going to be just based on my personal use of the video capabilities. I shoot all of my cinematic footage you see in my YouTube videos handheld. So having that new image stabilization is huge. Here are some of the examples on videos I shot with and without the stabilization. And again, it's all handheld and mostly using a super heavy 85 millimeter 1.2. I was also lucky to test out the new Canon 85mm f2 RF macro lens. It's super small, light and very well priced. I'm usually a fan of wide apertures but this little lens pleasantly surprised me. It's super sharp, very colorful and it was both perfect for headshots and full body shots. When compared to the RF 1.2 you can clearly see a big difference in bokeh and the background blur but I think it's completely up to personal taste and honestly, I can't decide which one I like better. Let me know what you guys think. 
and speaking of keeping it on the budget i love that the old ef lenses work really well with the new mirrorless system actually i think they work better on the mirrorless than they did on the original dslrs I shot some pictures with my old 85mm 1.2 which is the original Mark 1 and it worked so well on the R5 and the R6. I think that this is awesome news for those who want to switch to mirrorless and keep their old EF lenses. Upgrading to RF lenses might be quite expensive so this is a great opportunity to switch to mirrorless, get the autofocusing, the electronic viewfinder, the video capabilities and still keep the old lenses that you own all right so here are my final thoughts when i was transitioning from dslr to mirrorless i thought that there's no such thing as a perfect camera for me every brand and model seemed to have something i didn't like but with this release i'm more than happy i really can't think of something i don't like about the r5 and r6 and right now it's really hard to decide which one i'm gonna get what do you guys think considering the price and the specs should i go for the r5 or the r6 i love the r5 but i'm not sure i need all of those megapixels it's a hard choice and i'm still deciding maybe you guys can help me out but that's it for the video i will have more tutorials with these cameras in the future so let me know if you have any questions and i'll try to answer them all don't forget to give this video a like subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in my next one bye all right